People are fucking dumb. You can say what you want about this country, and I love this place. I love the freedoms we used to have. I love it. I love that. You know? uh -huh. I love it when it didn't take a fucking catastrophe to get us to care for one another. I love the fact that we're on camera all the time from all angles. But you know what? You can say what you want about America. And I say I love this place. I wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't live in any other time in history in any other place. But say what you want about America. Land of the free, home of the brave. We got some dumbass motherfuckers floating around this country. <laughs> dumbass motherfuckers. You know? Yeah. Now, obviously, that doesn't include this audience. I understand that. You seem intelligent and perceptive, but the rest of them, holy jumping fucking shitballs. Dumber than a second coat of paint. And this ain't just ranting and raving. This ain't just blowing off steam. I got a little evidence to support my claim. It just seems to me, seems to me, that only a really low IQ population could have taken this beautiful continent this magnificent American landscape that we inherited. Well, actually, we stole it from the Mexicans and the Indians, but <laughs> hey, it was nice when we stole it. It looked pretty good. It was pristine. Paradise. Have you seen it lately? Have you taken a good look at it lately? It's fucking embarrassing. Only a nation of unenlightened half-wits could have taken this beautiful place and turned it into what it is today, a shopping mall. A big fucking shopping mall. You know that? That's all you got. That's all you've got here, folks. Mile after mile of mall after mall. Many, many malls. Major malls and mini malls. They put the mini malls in between the major malls. And in between the mini malls, they put the mini marts. And in between the mini marts, you got the car lots, gas stations, muffler shops, laundromats, cheap hotels, fast food joints, strip clubs, and dirty bookstores. America the Beautiful, one big transcontinental commercial cesspool. And how do the people feel about all this? How do the people feel about living in a coast-to-coast -coast shopping mall? Well, they think it's just fucking dandy <laughs> they think it is cool as can be because Americans love the mall they love the mall that's where they get to satisfy their two most prominent addictions at the same time shopping and eating <laughs> millions of semi-conscious Americans day after day shuffling through the malls shopping and eating especially eating Americans love to eat they are they are fatally attracted to the slow death of fast food Hot dogs, corn dogs, triple bacon, cheeseburgers, deep fried butter, dipping in pork fat and cheese whiz, mayonnaise soaked, barbecued mozzarella, patty melts. Americans will eat anything, anything, anything. If you were selling sauteed raccoons assholes on a stick, <laughs> Americans would buy them and eat them. Especially if you dipped them in butter and put a little salsa on them. This country is big time, pig time. Forget the bald eagle. You know what the national emblem of this country ought to be? A big bowl of macaroni and cheese. A big bowl, because everything in this country is king size. King size, extra large, and super jumbo. Especially the fucking people. Have you seen some of the people in this country? Have you taken a good look at some of these big fat motherfuckers walking around? Big fat motherfuckers. Oh my God, huge piles of redundant protoplasm <laughs> lumbering through the malls like a fleet of interstate buses. The people in this country are immense, massive bellies, monstrous thighs, and big fat fucking asses. <laughs> and if you stand there for a minute and you look at one of them, you look at one of them, you, you, you begin to wonder, how does this woman take a shit? <laughs> how does she shit? And even more frightening, how does she wipe her ass? Can she even locate her asshole? She must require assistance. Are paramedics trained in this field? And standing right next to her, of course, with a plate full of nachos and a mouthful of pie is her clueless fucking husband, Joe Sixpack. With his monstrous swollen beer belly hanging dangerously out over his belt, beer belt buckle, this guy ain't seen his dick since the Nixon administration. And if you stand there and you look at the two of them, you begin to wonder to yourself, do these people fuck? Is this man actually capable of fucking this woman? It doesn't seem structurally possible that these two people could achieve penetration. 
Maybe they're in that Cirque du Soleil or something. I'm telling you, the people in this country are every half, every one of them is 50 pounds overweight. They are gargantuan. And in the summertime, God help us. In the summertime, they all want to wear short pants. Jesus, Lord, protector of all that is good and holy, deliver me from fat people in short pants. They all got short pants, big bellies, fat thighs, and dumb kids. Short pants, big bellies, fat thighs, and dumb kids. Every one of them's got two dumb ass kids with them. And the whole family is wearing t-shirts, and every one of them's got the same t-shirt. I'm with stupid. <laughs> Apparently in this country, the stupids are an extended family. And besides wearing them t-shirts, everyone in the family's got on a backpack. They got a backpack strapped to their back so they can carry around lots of stupid shit. And the reason they got to carry their stupid shit strapped to their backs is because their hands must remain free at all times to hold food. And to get that food up to the mouth where it gets shoveled in with all the rest of the disgusting shit they ate that day. And another reason for the backpacks is these people are going to buy even more stupid shit. They ain't got enough stupid shit at home. They just had a stupid shit sale. They ain't got to buy more. They're going to go out in the parking lot and stuff this stuff into the big, fat, ugly, oversized SUV that's got plenty of room in it. Plenty of room in it for stupid shit and lots of room left over for these big, fat, ugly motherfuckers to get them home. Stopping, of course, for jelly roll and fried dough. These people, these people are efficient, professional, compulsive consumers. That's their, they think of that as, their, as the, the, their national pride. It's their civic duty, consumption. It's the new national pastime. Fuck baseball. It's consumption. The only true lasting American value that's left, buying things. Buying things. People spending money they don't have on things they don't need. Money they don't have on things they don't need. So they can max out their credit cards and spend the rest of their lives paying 18% interest on something that costs twelve fifty, And they didn't like it when they got it home anyway. Not too bright, folks. Not too fucking bright. But if you talk to one of them about this, if you isolate one of them, you sit them down rationally, and you talk to them about the low IQs and the dumb behavior and the bad decisions, right away they start talking about education. That's the big answer to everything. Education. They say, we need more money for education. We need more, more, more books, more teachers, more classrooms, more schools. Uh, we need more testing for the kids. And you say to them, well, you know, we've tried all of that, and the kids still can't pass the test. They say, oh, don't you worry about that. We're going to lower the passing grades. And that's what they do in a lot of these schools now. They lower the passing grades so more kids can pass. More kids pass, the school looks good, everybody's happy, the IQ of the country slips another two or three points, and pretty soon all you'll need to get into college is a fucking pencil. <laughs> Got a pencil? Get the fuck in there, it's physics. <laughs> then everyone wonders why 17 other countries graduate more scientists than we do. Education! Politicians know that word, they use it on you. Politicians have traditionally hidden behind three things. The flag, the Bible, and children. No child left behind. No child left behind. Oh, really? Well, it wasn't long ago you were talking about giving kids a head start. Head start, left behind. Someone's losing fucking ground here. <laughs>